Hello. <laughs> okay. So I have to first apologize that I did not like say yesterday what time I was going to get on today because I worked till like 9 o'clock the last two days and I just um, didn't have time. And then I didn't know what time I was going to be able to get on today because my house looked like a bomb went off in it and I had to get my kid from school and it was it's just been... A little bit chaotic but I wanted to make sure I got on here and did this video so what I'm doing today is troubleshooting curls okay so I have it this is just yesterday's hair and I just kind of ran a brush through it and I haven't really done anything with it so but I want you guys I want this to be kind of more like a question and answer since I've already done a few tutorials I'm gonna show you some things um, you know with curling that are common mistakes and I will do my best because my hair is shorter to show you how to, you know, as well as with long hair, how to kind of get the different curls. So, um, oh yay, we have so many people hopping on. Sweet. Hopefully we'll just get more and more hair soon. So the first, um, first thing I'm going to start off with, which is probably the most common mistake, is the, actually, back up, scratch that. <laughs> I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about the two different, well, two or three different kinds of curls. Okay, so we all know of like the old school way of curling where you started here at the bottom and you rolled the hair up. Okay, so we pretty much don't ever do that curl anymore. Mostly for the reason that you're starting at the very bottom of the hair and you're rolling that curling iron up. So the first place that you're curling is down here and the last place that you're curling is up here. So the curls will hold better down here and fall up here. So most of us want the exact opposite of that. Most of us want volume and curl through here and a little bit straighter and piecier through here. So being that different, then you're going to stop, start at the top and you curl, you wrap it around and curl that way. Hold on, I'm going to grab an iron that's not on so that I can kind of show you. Okay, so if so, this one's not on, so it's not going to actually curl the hair, but so the old way was down here, and you roll the hair up like this. Yeah, we don't ever want to do those curls. I mean, maybe sometime, but not really. So instead, you start at the top, and you wrap the hair around, open the clamp a little bit, and turn it, and then you pump the clamp a little bit, and then turn it again, and then pump and then turn, okay? So that's the new way of curling and that's the only way that you're gonna curl with a curling iron. Um, second thing, so though that way, like that, where you clamp and curl, clamp and curl, this is gonna give you a flatter curl because the hair is flat and clamped in there, okay? If you want kind of more of that big round, um, it's a more of a round kind of bulkier curl, that's when you're going to take the hair and wrap it around the iron, okay? Because the hair is not so flat, the hair is kind of almost wrapped up. And if you remember, like, kind of back in the day, too, there was, like, an old technique that you could twist the hair and then clamp and curl it, and that kind of gave you that same look. But the easier way now to do that is to just wrap around, and that's going to give you more of that um, rounder curl. And when I say round, I mean the... The actual shape of the hair that the hair takes on where a clamp and curl is going to be a flatter curl okay so um, when my hair was long I actually used to alternate quite a bit between a um, wrap round curl and a clamp and curl so I would maybe do like the first layer with all clamp and curls and then the second layer that I would curl I would do a wrap and um, a wrap curl. Yeah, so a wand, a wand is always going to give you more of that round curl, and those curls also tend to um, clump together. So if you feel like you know when you curl your hair and then all your curls clump into like one big curl, a lot of the times like a wand is going to give you that, and the um, wrapping it around the curling iron is going to give you that. I personally prefer a curling iron 
that has a clamp on it as opposed to a wand. And I'll tell you why. Wands, I feel like, so when you grab that section of hair and you're wrapping it around, you don't have this part here, okay? So you're wrapping it around and then the, it heats, obviously, from the inside of the hair to the outside of the hair. And it takes a minute, especially if you take a big section, to get that heat to the outside of the hair. So when this is wrapped around and it's heating, it's heating, you know, this hair that's on the outside is taking a lot longer to get hot and to curl. And then the hair that's touching the iron is going to get more damage. So I feel like wands tend to get damaged or tend to create a little bit more damage because they're heating from the inside to the outside and that hair on the inside um, gets hotter. What if you have to wear hair extensions? Should you curl them before you put them in or after they're in? I like to curl hair extensions after they're in because then I feel like you can curl them, you, you know, they can take on, you can hold them at the same angle that you're curling the rest of the hair and it takes on more of a natural appearance. So I like to do them while the hair is in. But also be careful if you're wearing hair extensions to not get like a bunch of your hair mixed in with the hair extensions when you're curling them because again, back to the whole damage thing, your hair extensions are going to take hotter heat and longer heat to curl and your natural hair is not going to take as much. So be careful with that. So I like to curl them while they're in the hair, but I keep kind of the extension pieces separate and curl those separate. Um, clamp and curl, yeah, clamp and curl. So starting at the top of the hair and wrapping it around. So you start right at the root. You get right underneath there and you clamp and curl. Hold it for a minute and then roll it and curl. Roll it and curl, okay? Um, Oh, 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 and then he spotted you on chain.com. Sweet. <laughs> I have a friend that sells some clothes and asked me to help her out, and it's been kind of fun. I'm really not much a uh, model material. I'm like, don't you got to be, like, real tall, skinny to do that? Like, I got, I'm short and squatty and got a lot of junk in my trunk. I don't know that people <laughs> want to see that, but whatever. I don't know. So... Anyways, yes, yeah, so that would be the two difference between the main curls. Um, so a straighter, kind of piecier, flatter curl, you're going to do a clamp and curl technique. A rounder, you know, barrel curl, you're going to do a wrap around. If you want different textures, the reason I said I switch and would alternate when my hair was longer is so that it created different texture in the hair, so that it wasn't, so that it didn't all clump into one big curl. And if you go back to my Instagram when my hair was longer, you'll be able to see that like you'll and when my hair was longer I use this um, half inch curling iron all the time just joined are you going to post this so we can rewatch it yes I'm gonna try so hard to remember to save it so that you can rewatch it so um, I when my hair was longer I use this one inch or this half inch I'm curling read iron this. huh I'm gonna read this. Um, I can't right now I can come look in a minute so this one right here, um, this half inch is awesome. Like I love it because you can take bigger sections of hair. Oh, back to the clamp, the wand. So I finished, sorry. I'm like squirrel, like all, all sorts of distracted. But I just remembered what I was saying. So wrap. So when instead of a wand with a clamp curling iron, you can clamp it down and then you're heating both sides of the hair. You're heating the inside and the outside instead of just he heating through the video. <laughs> or, sorry, I'm reading. Instead of heating just on one side. So that is why I prefer the actual curling iron as opposed to a wand, okay? So, thank you. Oh, thank you, Chris Liss, for watching me because I feel like a goofus most of the time. So, um, okay, another thing. So, with curls, it is all about the angle that you hold the curling iron, okay? So, when you're curling the hair, and you know, back in the day when fair faucet was big. So the fair faucet curl was your, was where you would take that curling iron, and obviously you used a much, you know, a bigger one. But see how my clamp right here is down? It's facing down, and I'm gonna basically, and then you're curling it up, okay? So can you see right where that, where it rounds? That's, exactly where you're creating the curl. So, this is not a bad thing 
Oh, hey Cheryl. <laughs> so this is not necessarily a bad thing, but you just need to know why you're doing what you're doing. So and what look it's going to create. So when I, like I said, this is not on, but if I were to let that go and it were heating, you would get a wave here and then your curl would feather back. Okay. So if you want that look, um, oh good. I'm so glad you that it's helping. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you for watching them. I really appreciate it. So that is, so again, if you're holding a curling iron this way, where that curling iron bends, that's where you're gonna get your first round shape. So if you hold the curling iron up and this way, and you curl under here, where this top part is and it curls, that again, is where you're gonna get your shape. So if this was on, the curl would come out looking like that, okay? So you see the difference in, you know, just the angle that you're holding the curl. If you're getting a kink in your hair while you're curling it, it's because you are, your, your clamp, whatever direction it is, you might, you're not, um, what's the right word? Wherever your clamp is, you're not creating a smooth transition into your curl. Your clamp is getting in the way and that's why you're creating a kink in your curl. So, and I tell my clients all the time, you're always, everything usually away from your face, you're gonna be curling, or everything in front of your face, you're gonna curl away from your face. So we wanna give the appearance of like a lighter lifted, you know, give us a facelift with our hair. So you're gonna curl it all away from the face. Um, if you like textured curls, you can throw one or two curls here and there um, that are curled in towards the face, and that can give you a little bit more texture in your hair as well. It's just up to you, but for me personally, instead of switching directions of my curls, I like to just use different sizes of irons. So if I want more texture, I might use this iron and this iron and just kind of alternate my curls and that will also give you a lot of texture because you're seeing, and again, that will kind of help with the whole curls clumping into one thing. Um, super important when you're curling. Okay, so side part, like if you have a side part like I do here, it is very natural. Like I said, I haven't done my hair yet today, so don't judge me here. It's very natural to want to take your curling iron down here and curl like this. Okay, super, super natural. That is okay, it's not wrong, but just know that if you're not getting the lift up here that you want, but that is why it's because you started down here and you're curling down here, where if you want lift and you want volume, like so for a side part, because I part so heavily on the side here, I'm gonna take this whole section of hair and I'm gonna hold it straight up, not down here, you know, not down here, like you're gonna hold it straight up and you're gonna get that curling curling iron right at that root and then curl, hold it, and then curl and then hold it, curl and hold it. So when I say curl, I'm just lightly pumping my um, bar here to open it just enough that I can actually twist and curl the hair, okay? So that is Exactly, and then that's going to give you, that's going to focus a lot of your curl up here at the root and give you that lift up here. Um, and if you're right-handed, you know, when you get to this side, if you're doing a wrap-around curl, that's, this side's tricky because if you're wrapping around your curl, it's natural to kind of go wrap it this way, but that means that hair is going to curl that way. So if you're doing a wrap-around curl, you got to get really creative with how you hold your iron in order to make that curl go the direction that you want it, okay? So like your curling iron should always be faced the direction that you want your curl to lay. So and remember that too, like with your clamp, you know, you want your clamp to be in that smooth transition of guiding that hair round and smooth. Just always remember that where the hair is very first rounding on that barrel, that is where your curl is gonna start, okay? Because if you, you know, do this number and it's the hair's being pulled down 
and then it's rounding back like on this angle. The curl that I'm creating there is again more of that flatter curl here and then the fair faucet wave, okay? Where it kind of comes down and out. If you want lift, then you go under and get it that way. If you're gonna clamp and curl, you go this way. And again, you know, you have to be creative with how you hold, hold the iron because there are certain areas that it'll be easier and it'll feel natural, and then there's other areas that you're like, well, wait a minute, I don't even know here. But get creative. Like, if this is awkward for you when you're doing these side pieces to hold it straight up and down, then try coming at this angle. Try coming in, you know, up and down this way with the curling iron pointed down instead of up. I have the Conair Red Handled Curling Iron Wand. Can you still do this look with this wand? So. You can't, you can still do it with a wand, but if you, and you'll see this when I repost it if you watch the beginning of the video, but there's, wands give you more of a round curl, and they don't, they, they heat from only one side, which is the interior of the hair, and so they tend to be more of a round, bulky curl. So the way you're going to get it with a wand is if you go through with your flat iron after to straighten those pieces out a little bit. How do you prep and clean the hair to hold the curls? Okay, so, um, sorry, my dog is eating stuff. So that is, River, hey, get out of there. So to prep the hair, it's very important to have good products in the hair. You need, um, I love, love using wet products, of course. So when my hair is wet, I use the volumizing tonic and the thickening tonic, the, um, what else do I use wet? And then I use a damage protectant. When it's dry, I put in the Pure Abundance Potion and I put in um, the air control. So prepping the hair for curls to get them to hold, I absolutely love the Aveda Air Control Hairspray. It's kind of irreplaceable. I've tried many other ones and they don't work. Okay, so I wanna make sure I'm not missing these. Okay, the hot tool seems to be the rest route. Yes, I love hot tools. It has a temperature control. You can, I love, I think probably the one inch is the most universal size. Favorite products, techniques, or volume. Okay, I'll get to that. And does the back of the hair hit the shoulders or is it longer? My, the back of my hair pretty much hits the top of my shoulders. Maybe just a tiny, tiny bit longer. Um, okay, so back to this hairspray. The Air Control Hairspray. This is kind of an irreplaceable product for the fact that you spray it on the hair and it's really lightweight. So you really can't even feel it in the hair. Like it doesn't feel crunchy, stiff, nothing. But when you apply heat to it, it kind of hardens and then holds. So then it holds and creates that curl, but then when you run your fingers through it again, it's soft. So it doesn't weigh your hair down, it doesn't get sticky, it doesn't get crunchy. Like it is amazing. So, and then this is also the hairspray that I use to back comb, and then I spray it with this hairspray to hold it. So, I've been asked before, like, what you know, if they, if you don't use products, can you still get this look? No, you can't. Like, prop my hair without products is so flat, so fine, so stringy. Like, it has nothing to it. So without all these products that help bulk the hair up and give it that PC texture, you can't get the same look. Like, my hair would look so different if I didn't use the product. Um, do you spray each curl? No, I usually don't. I spray the sections to back comb. Now if you have, my hair's fine, so I don't need to. If you have that hair that's really like fine to medium texture, it's usually medium texture, and you have lots of it, and it's really soft and really shiny and you feel like you can never get PC texture hold, then yes, spray with the air control hairspray. You could do each piece or you could kind of just give it a good spray all over per section and that will help to hold the curl. Would love to see other ways to style this cut. I just got a cut like this and slowly learning new ways to wear pleats and things. Yes, you're welcome. I can definitely do that. Like I, you know, and I switch mine up a lot by moving my part because I feel like that creates a different look all the time too. This hairspray is 29. Um, so, yes, 
you, and then I also, you know, wear it straight, but I will try to get some other styling, um, like different styles with this haircut. Let's see, I'm getting my haircut today. If I want your cut, what should I tell her to do? So, my cut is pretty super basic. It's one length, it has no layers in it. It's slightly longer in the front than it is in the back. And it's a little longer on this side than it is on this side. Not by much, but just a little bit. Um, and then it just has texture to it. So, you know, like you can get that by like a slide cutting technique, um, depending on how thick your hair is. But you can slide cut. If you have tons and tons of hair, then you would do thinning shears as well as slide cutting. But most of the time, it's just going to be like a slide cutting or point cutting technique. Let's see. What colors are in your hair? Um, well, I have some good roots going on right now, so that would be my natural color. Well, I'm naturally about a level 6. Everything else, I do a base color of a level 8 with ash and neutral in it. And then I just do a few highlights through the front with bleach. And then I periodically will pull down highlights through here as I feel needed. If I start to feel like I'm getting too dark up here, then I'll pull a couple highlights through every now and again. So I try to keep it as simple as possible and as less damage on my hair as possible so that I'm not frying it. <laughs> is that a cotton on tank under your flannel? <laughs> this is a cotton on tank. Yes, ma'am. And I love it. It's a great one. Cotton on has great tanks. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to think of what else with curls. I established the, oh, and I usually always curl it in sections. So I part it off and I get my first section and I curl that first section. I usually curl it in sections of three or four. Yes, you're welcome, Sam. So I usually curl it in sections of three or four because I feel like if you don't, you're gonna end up going back to try to troubleshoot those pieces anyways. So um, you might as well just take the time. Did you miss the tutorial? So I actually really haven't done a tutorial. I've just been like troubleshooting curls and kind of giving you um, techniques. But I can go through and like curl my hair today. I might as well do it. I might as well get my hair done while we're talking about it. So I sleep with my hair. Um, I get asked this a lot because I do all of that back combing Good, I'm glad I'm helping you out. I hope my skills as a hairdresser are able to help people. <laughs> so, um, when I sleep with my hair, I just put it in a one of those invisible bobbles. Let me grab one. Elastics, like one of these. And these don't like leave lines. So I only wrap it twice, so it's really loose and I put it on top of my head. This helps preserve the volume and the curls. Or if you have a scrunchie, remember those awesome scrunchies? Those are still awesome, so use one. Anything that's not super tight. If you use a regular elastic, it'll just you know create creases in the hair and not last as long. Um, and not preserve your uh, curls in your hairdo. Okay, so I'll just go through and curl. Oh, the pink detangle brush. The Tangle Teaser. This thing is awesome. I'm sure you can order them on Amazon or your local beauty supply like Sally's probably has them. I love, love, love the Tangle Teaser. Do you pull all of your hair up or just top? I pull as much as I can get up. Yay, I'm so glad you found me too. I am so glad you watched me. <laughs> yes, I am so glad. So I just pull as much as I can get on top of my head. Hold a curl. Yay, that makes me feel so good. Like I seriously can't tell you how awesome it is to hear these comments because I feel like a major idiot most of the time when I get on here and I'm talking to my phone. <laughs> I will say though, I love, um, I absolutely love the slides because I love that I can talk to you so I don't feel like I'm just talking to myself. So that is super awesome. Let's see, I have naturally curly hair like you. What would you suggest for frizziness and heat protectant for styling the hair every day? So there's lots of products that I could recommend for you for that. 
Um, the, the biggest one would be the Smooth Infusion. It's the Aveda Smooth Infusion Style Prep Smoother. That one fights against humidity. That one preps the hair. It has a heat protectant on it. So that kind of is going to give you everything you need. So it's the Smooth Infusion Style Prep Smoother. And then you can add whatever layering products on top of that. That would be your prepping product and kind of give you the base of what you need and then add on top. Um, I know in your last video you recommended a Veda Root Spray, but I just picked up some Got To Be Root Builder and hope it adds some volume and hold. Yes, I'm sure, I'm sure that any kind of root lift is going to help you out for sure. Like if you're not using a product, a, any root lift is probably going to be better than not using any. I don't, I'm not... I've tried a lot of other products, but I'm extremely partial to Aveda, and probably just because it's what I've been, I've grown up with, I'm like, have been trained with, they're all natural, like I love Aveda, and I love their products, but again, whatever, you know, you need to use for you, that is great, and yes, it's super good to have a volumizer, so whatever brand it is, that works. Kitty Kate, I work at Grassroots Salon in Utah. <laughs> Pink Bride says everyone get all the products she suggests. They're amazing. They are amazing. And especially when you know how to use them. They are phenomenal. They are amazing. Oh, Alex, you're so nice. <laughs> Thank you. You're seriously so awesome. I love all you guys. I can't tell you how awesome it is to like meet all these people through social media. And they're all so dang nice. I only had one person that told me that my eyes were too big, and that was it. Let's <laughs> see, my 72-year-old mom has been doing hair for 60 years and still works 40, 50 hours a week. She's the only person who's ever touched my hair in all these years. I never knew that about the kink. Oh, <laughs> well, I am super glad I just got you the kink. So right now, you can see, I just sprayed with the air control hairspray, and I kind of just went through it and flat ironed the base of my roots just a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, so let me tell you this funny story. Okay, Pink Bride. So when I first kind of started with the social media thing, um, I had a lady send me a message, a direct message, that said that she didn't know what I was doing to make my eyes look so big, but I should quit photoshopping <laughs> shopping them because they look so, they look unnatural and kind of alienish. So, um... That was awesome. <laughs> I was like, oh man, what really sucks is that those aren't like really my eyes, but it's cool. I'll uh, try to squint from now on when I take pictures. <laughs> so I've kind of been, ever since then, I've kind of been a little self-conscious about how unnatural and how big my eyeballs are. So that was really though the only like not so nice comment that I've ever gotten. Other than that, like I am so amazed with how nice and sweet and genuine so many people are. Like, it seriously is amazing. <laughs> I know people are so, so funny. <laughs> I, I responded back and I was like, I just said, I am very sorry that my eyes look unnatural. I said, unfortunately, that is just my eyeballs. But I really will do my best to make sure I don't make my eyes look bigger than they really are. So that was pretty awesome. My family still makes fun of me to this day about that. <laughs> Mostly my husband. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty awesome. Okay, so this kind of went through and touched up. And you could see, like, obviously underneath, I didn't really do much with those curls because they're pretty curly still from yesterday. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You guys are the best. <laughs> do you ever do makeup a point, or makeover? Oh, gosh, where's it going? Makeover um, on people with their hair to do the mascara beauty product. Mascara, so like the makeup, L L R's. Are is that or L Lars? Thirteen. Are you asking about for makeup? Ruger. Oh, good. You don't have a bone. <laughs> You're curious to see what her eyeballs look like. <laughs> uh, me too. Yes. 
backcombing your hair before you curl it is a game changer on makeup and hair makeover. Well, I do. I mean, I do definitely. I try to do once every other month or so, like an event in the salon where I do, like apply the makeup and color match people. So I try to do that um, quite, you know, like every other month. But I pretty much all my clients that ever come into me, I go over products and styling with them when they're in my chair. Big eyes for the win. Woo woo! <laughs> Yeah, so one of them, curling irons. This one is a, oh, this is a Jibbery. And this one is a Hot Tools. Hair makeup and hair makeover. That's a good idea. I should do that. Just joined. Natalie, awesome. Happy to have you. Um, I'm using a one inch um, Hot Tools curling iron. So I'm going to tell you about curling irons here for a minute and my personal opinion. If you have um, really thick, coarse, you know, strong hair, you will need to spend some money on a curling iron to get one that's going to curl your hair and hold it. And by that I mean not a lot, but like at least 50. Like you need to at least buy like a $50 curling iron that's gonna heat and hot. Let's see. Okay, Kitty Kate, I will tell you that in just one second. So you will need a curling iron that is that gets good and hot because if it doesn't get hot, it's not gonna curl your hair. So with, um, but if you have fine, thin hair, you probably don't need to spend that kind of money on a super nice iron. Can you get away with like a Conair curling iron from the store? Absolutely. Yes, they are awesome. The Hot Tools Helen of Troy curling iron is awesome. So yeah, you, you will need to spend the money. I can tell you the difference in a professional curling iron and um, just like a cheap one, like a Conair. One, a Conair is not going to get near as hot, okay? They don't get very hot, so they don't curl as fast, and they don't, um, and again, they're not going to, especially if you have coarse, thick, or even if you have medium texture hair and it's fine, and you're one of those people that can't ever get their curls to hold no matter what, you're going to need a stronger iron. Um, yes, I will upload this to YouTube. You'll need a stronger iron because that's why they're not curling is because it's not getting hot enough. Now, I, I have Conair curling iron to, and then cords. Your cords, they're really short in like a cheap iron where with the hot tools you have a longer cord. So I tell my clients a lot, like if they have fine hair, don't worry about spending the money on buying a super nice iron because you really, it's probably not going to benefit you a ton. So, and I don't really ever, mine is set at this, this iron goes to 450 and I have it set at 400. Um, and then I don't really ever recommend it on the hottest, hottest setting, like ever. Okay, so be careful with that. Let me scroll back up here. Super thin and I have extensions to look some one normal and somewhat normal and have decent hair. What products do you recommend for hair growth? So hair growth, you're going to need, for sure, the biggest thing you can do is make sure you're using protect, protectants on your hair, really good deep conditioners, and you're really taking care of your hair so that it's not getting broken because you're it's going to grow, but you want to make sure it's not breaking as it's growing, okay? So moisturize, protect, all that kind of stuff. Um, hair growth though, there's some vitamins that you can get. I, there's like, I've heard really good things about those sugar bear vitamins. So those are supposed to be really, really good for hair growth. You can check those out. Yes, I always say my hair feels like a horse's tail. It doesn't look like it, but it's so thick and coarse. So yeah, Natalie, you would definitely need like a hotter iron and flat iron. I have super straight hair, doesn't hold a curl very well. Styling product suggestions. Use a um, like a lightweight gel when your hair is wet to prep it. And then when it's dry, um, use like 
something to pre, like I love this Aveda Air Control Hairspray, and I talked about that in the beginning, so you can go back and watch that, but it's amazing. Let's see, so tease first, then spray. Yes, back comb, spray, curl. So that's what I do with every piece and every section. I'm hoping I got those out curled. At least every section from the eyebrows up. So now I'm gonna go back, I start, then I like to kind of work my way back here and do this back section. Back comb, nice and tight, spray. Now if you have that hair that's hard to curl, spray the whole piece with the air control hair spray. And then curl, hold the hair up, right at the root, clamp and curl, and I leave a good chunk of my ends out because I like kind of more of that piecier texture. So, now I'm going to take this section. So because I'm parting my hair on the side today, I'm going to work this top section in very, in a lot smaller pieces because I'm going to back home right there, spray, because this is what's going to give it lift and texture up at the top so that it's not flat and so that all the curls don't just like completely clump together. Sorry, my dog is chewing a bone and he is noisy. <laughs> He's such a pain. Okay, spray. So you can see, see that already, like the lift that that creates? And I always tell my customers, make your hair really big when you're styling it, because you can always go back through and tame it down, but it's hard once it's already done to try to then go back and make it bigger. So I like to make it, you know, I back comb it heavily and spray and curl, and then you can go back through and like tame it all down. So you can see this whole last section of hair right here for that side part. Let's see, which way is this one going? That one's going to come over here. So even up until this very last piece, I'm going to back comb it. And you can see I'm holding the hair straight up and back combing this way. I'm not holding it down here and back combing underneath. Straight up. And then here, I'm going to get right underneath that root. And I'm creating that round shape right from the base. That's where I want it. So if I were to turn my iron this way, then I'd be creating the round shape this way. If I were to turn it more this way, then your round shape is going to feather up that way. Does that all make sense? Can you guys, do you understand what I'm saying when, you're, when it's all about the angle that you're holding that curling iron? Wherever that first initial round shape of the barrel is, that's what direction your hair is going to. So when you're thinking about curling it, you got to really think about like cause and effect. Okay, if I hold my iron right here and the hair comes around and goes around this way, that's the way my curl's going to go. If I hold it this way, my curl's going to come up and this way and then it's going to like feather down that way. So it's all about the angle that you hold that curling iron. then you this front piece here this one's always a little trickier for me I'm always a little unsure about these front pieces because I don't like these ones as curly so I don't like these ones to be super ringlety so so again I'm gonna kind of change mine here so instead of curling like this because that's gonna create a kind of a more feathered back curl I'm gonna go up and under and create the roundness right here So 
then I just kind of take my fingers and work it all out. So you can't see the big rat's nest that lives inside of there. <laughs> and this side. So I really hope it. So can you see how that kind of creates? That's what's giving that all that texture through here instead of having one big ball of clumpy curls down here. And it's all about where you pull the hair and where you're curling it at. If your curling iron is focused all down here the whole time, that's where all your curls are going to be. If your curling iron is focused up here the whole time, that's where they're all going to be. So you have to really kind of think about it. And, you know, like I pretty much move with the head. I start at the bottom and kind of just keep moving with the head with my curling iron. Okay. So then... To finish it off, I'm going to use the Aveda Texture Tonic, right here. This is like a sea salt spray, and I just kind of spray that throughout, and that really helps kind of piece out and give that a little more texture to the hair. And then a lot of times I'll finish off, and you don't need very much of that, just a little tiny bit, and it does a great job. And if you need to here, I mean, because I already, this is second day hair, I don't have to do as much work, but if you need to, you can go through and flat iron some of your end pieces so that they're a little bit straighter on the ends. So now I'm going to take my Aveda Fermata hairspray, which is a stronghold hairspray, and I just kind of spray that everywhere to like piece it out and hold it. I like to use wet hairsprays instead of aerosols for like an all over spray finish. Because I feel like it then pieces it and separates it, and then it all falls separately. Instead of if you use like a stronghold aerosol hairspray, it'll all kind of hold together and all falls together. So kind of more like helmety. But sometimes, like in this section here that drives me crazy that hangs in my eyeballs if I part it on the side, I like to use the air con or the control force hairspray, which is a really strong hold, and I'll kind of spray it up up and under in this section right there just to keep that piece out of my face so yeah but that is it oh man I feel like I miss I just realized what temp do you keep your hot tools on my thing was stuck I answered that one yes I'll upload this hi Sandy sugar bear hair there you go for the hair vitamins Hello, hello. I'm going to use my hair is growing back from chemotherapy. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, those I hear, they work phenomenal. My sister took them for a while, and they her hair grew way fast. Pregnant and noticing hair loss and breakage already. What would you recommend for that? Um, definitely make sure you're moisturizing your hair, using a good deep conditioner. Um, usually when you're pregnant, your hair is pretty good. It's right after you have your baby that it gets kind of not so great. So keep, keep, if you're having a lot of breakage, make sure you're just putting all kinds of good stuff in your hair. Good protectants. Um, and the sugar bear hair. Yep. I don't think, I'm not sure if those are safe to use while pregnant, but did you straighten your curls first? Nope. I did not straighten them first. What kind of dog do we have? Oh, I have a lab. I actually have three dogs. I have a Yorkie, a Shih Tzu, and a lab. But the lab is the youngest, so he's the naughtiest. Any specific comb for back combing? Um, I, just a fine tooth comb. You want to make sure it's fine tooth and not, whoops, and not a big comb. And then if these bristles are stronger, the more sturdier they are, the better it's going to back comb. <laughs> the Lion King look before I tame it. I'm supposed to be vacuuming my house right now, but this is way more fun. Hey, I feel you all the time. <laughs> I do that a lot. And then I'll be like, I'm just going to look at social media for like two seconds. And then I like three hours later, I'm like, oh man, I got to get going. Let's see. Thanks for so much sharing your tips. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you use products, Kelsey Woods, if you use products before you do all that, I promise you your curls will not come out. Um, let's see, what kind of technique did you say the stylist needs to do to get your hair cut? Slide, slide, S-L-I-D-E, slide cut. I cannot grow this postpartum baby hair regrowth. It's been over a year. 
How much? Uh, yeah, postpartum baby hair growth is rough, and I wish I had some magic cure for you. You could do the sugar bear vitamins because it really does help, but often it's just hormones. It's just those crazy hormones that make our hair fall out, and then it sucks. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Like, seriously, guys, I can't thank you enough for watching these videos because I... I really, really appreciate it. My hair girl is What do you makeup recommend? Um oh Sam. Yeah, I didn't look at the name. Sam, when you're blonde and you go dark, it almost looks more damaged because you're because all that blonde hair is still underneath it, but then you're seeing more of those split ends and it is rough, like it's rough. So the best thing you can do, number one, you know, a good, get a good deep conditioner. But another thing that you can do is to get, because also when you color the hair dark after being blonde, the best way I can describe it to clients is, you know, like if you take a white crayon and you color on paper really, 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 really hard, so it's solid white crayon, and then you try to take a brown crayon and you color over it, and no matter how hard you color or how dark it goes, um, you still, it still has that weird kind of transparent um, color to it and it's really lifeless and it's because there's no shine to the hair. So you could get like a yellow shampoo, like one that has a lot of gold and yellow to it and or even red and red and yellow are what's going to create shine in the hair and kind of bring it back to life. So that would be a great thing to get or you could go in and get a treatment with like a gloss or a glaze, um, like a deep, like a they call them um, like a deposit only treatment that has just cut like tone to it. So no depth, but just tone. So that would be a good option for you too, Sam. Um, and then a good deep conditioner. Be uh, moisturizing. You don't need one that's so much, I mean, maybe just do like one once a week and just, the Aveda has a couple good ones. I can give you recommendations if you want them, but they help a ton. Let's see. I'm getting on here, so I'm not sure if you already answered it, but how do you get that volume? Uh... Jolene, I will save it so you can go back in the beginning and watch it. Keep the videos coming. Thank you, Pink Bride. I just got my hair cut like yours and I need the blow drying video. <laughs> I was so mad when I did that blow drying video and didn't save it. So I will really, I probably gotta wash my hair like tomorrow. So I'll try to do it tomorrow. Hello from Turkey. Woohoo. Hello. Thanks for watching. Let's see. Yes, you're welcome, Sam. Will you get credit for us purchasing the Veda products? Um, no, if you go, I really like you to go, if you do go to Grassroots Salon, if you're a local Davis Weber um, counties, go to Grassroots Salon in Layton and purchase there because that supports my local salon. Um, but if you do get online and order them, there's not, a, I don't get credit for them that way. But if you type in that Grassroots is your salon, that would be great because they do track like all of our numbers and stuff. And I want to really credit my salon for training me. And that's, I think they sh are, my salon should get credit for it. So if you go online to purchase, tell them that grass, it will ask you what your salon is and put grassroots salon. It should be in the drop down box. So that would be awesome. Have you tried Lipsense? I have. And you know what? I tried it for a good solid month and I really wish it worked for me. But I think my skin is so dry that it just would flake off. And I don't, here's another thing. I'm not talking bad about lip scents, I promise, because I think it's a great product for people that it works for, but um, I just don't have the patience to apply the gloss like a bunch of times a day. So like I like to put my color on once in the morning and not touch it the rest of the day. I do the same thing with my makeup. I put it on once and I don't touch it. I don't touch it up, I don't add extras. Like it is what it is in the morning and what it is at night is sometimes really scary, but <laughs> I don't like to deal with it through the day, so love the Aveda products. They are the best. Yes, and Pink Bride, I know there's so many people that love it, and I wish so bad. I think it's just because my skin is so dry. It just would dry and flake off. Hey, Lisa. Let's see. Got it. Okay, it's not for everyone. I know. I, that's how I feel the same way. You you feel me, girl. Um, is it good for oily skin? What are we talking about here? Oh, my necklace. Target, of course. <laughs> Who makeup tutorials? I will do some more makeup. Um, I love your hair and watch your videos. I just can't duplicate it. You can do it, girl. I promise you can do it. Oh, the makeup. Is it good for oily skin? Yes, it can be very good for oily skin. 
you're, there's just a few things that I recommend, which is setting with powder and um, using it for a good two weeks. Because really a lot of the times people who have oily skin, it's because their skin lacks oil and so it overproduces oil. So if you're not moisturizing or you're actually drying your skin out because you feel like your skin is too oily, it'll overproduce and you get super oily. So a lot of my customers have said that when they started using this makeup, it took like two weeks for it to adjust, but then their skin was better than it had ever been. So, cause it's a cream, so it kind of balances out your oil production. Let's see, I have been using for a while headstone first in contour and someone checks it out. Olive, I feel like it's so warm on me. I'm doing something wrong or should I just stick with stone? So stone is actually warmer than olive. Olive is a mix between stone and ash. But if you feel like it's too warm, go back to stone or you could try ash contour because ash is gonna be a little bit more ashier. So that would be a good one. Oh, Susie, thank you. Thanks for watching. Favorite brush. I have the 30 second hack. It's, let's see, I wanna try a new one. I love the detail hack. I pretty much use the detail hack every day to apply my makeup. What face products do you use? Lotion, cleanser. Um, I use, while well, I was using the mascara, the new milk cleanser and moisturizer for the last four months and I ran out and it hasn't launched yet. So I got some samples and I haven't been able to get more. So I went back to what I was using before, which is the Aveda Tourmaline Charge Cleanser, which I love. And that's great stuff too. Um, I don't know, Jeanette. I wish I knew when the cleanser was coming out. They hadn't given us a date, but I'm hoping really, really soon. Do I have a site with the mascara makeup? Yes, ma'am. If you click on my link in my bio and then click mascara makeup, it will take you to the um, to the site. So then you can look at everything there. Hey, will you tell Bentley he's got to go home? Thank you. Um, so yes, any other questions? Let me make sure I'm not missing any. Okay, I feel like... I love the way you make your makeup or your brow. So um, I use mascara makeup and I'm an artist for the company so I can help you with that. And I, that's all I use, eyeshadows, guys, and I did use the new blush today, Sandstone, and I love it. Like it's kind of like the perfect blush. If you're not one that loves pink blushes, like more of a bronzier look, that is amazing. Like, it is amazing. I love that blush. Under eye from mascara. Depends on your coloring, Pink Bride. But Aura can be good, and Sunlit can be really good to brighten under the eyes. Um, yes, I am a makeup artist. I have dark circles. Yeah, Aura or um, even Moonlit. You can even go as light as Moonlit, which is the very lightest one to help with dark circles under the eye. But Sunlit works really good because it's really yellow based and so it kind of helps counteract that dark circle under the eyes. Okay. Well, oh, I, before I hop off, if you would like a color match with mascara makeup, you can send me two pictures of yourself. One with no makeup on and one with your regular makeup on and then both of them in natural light and then I can help to match your colors when I say natural light usually that means like facing a window like you are looking outside that window and you take a picture and so that you're getting like that natural light that's coming onto your face is that makeup expensive no it's so cheap like the makeup itself let me grab my palette hold on so this is like my palette. I have a big one because, you know, I'm a little bit obsessive, but. So these, you have, usually most people do four colors, a highlight, a contour, a blush, and an illuminator. So your highlight would be like this lighter color. This is $12. And then you have a contour. This is $12. Your blush, these are my blushes. A single blush is $12, and your illuminator is also $12. So for all three, or all four of them, it's $48 and you get a case for free. And then you can just buy things as you need them for only $12. So it's a really, really good price. I don't think that they're shipping to France yet. I know they're working really hard. We just, I think they just are getting Mexico up and going. But yes, and it does. The makeup lasts forever. Like it's, it really does go a good amount of time. And, you're, and then it's cool because if you like lighten up, like if you're kind of tanner right now because the summer just getting over and then you lighten up, you can just 
purchase one single for $12 for a lighter color instead of having to buy like a whole bottle of foundation that's, you know, 30 to $60. So super, super awesome. It's a great price. And then eyeshadows, all the eyeshadows too, which I'll show you. All the eyeshadows are, whoops, all the eyeshadows are also only $12 and they come in these little, um, little, they're, actually they're five ounces, five grams of shadow, which is more than like pretty much any other brand. Like Macs are like three, if not less than that, three grams of color. So I'll kind of pop them out. They're all magnetic. So you put them into your case so you can custom build your own palette. So no more buying like, you know, $50 huge palettes for one color. Like you can purchase your colors you want and create your own palette. Hello! So. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Um, yeah, the makeup, the ingredients are listed on their website, but they're very, very small compared to most other makeup brands. The ingredient list is like this. This is very small. Yes, you send me pictures and direct messages and I can match you up. Yes, cruelty free. Um, it's cruelty free and paraben free and hypoallergenic. So <clears throat> the shadows, the eyeshadows are powder. So those are all powder based. Foundations and blushes are all <laughs> crews. <laughs> hey, hey, Rad. Rad. Oh, he left. I'm gonna tell him that Olivia's mom says hi. You drove by today and. He's all, Mom, that girl that watches your videos just drove by. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. I said, did she talk to you today in school? He said, yeah. Let's see. Okay, now that I'm just rambling. So, anyways, thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions, send me some DMs. And, ooh, hi from the UK. Woo, woo. That's awesome. We will, I'll get them answered for you. I hope you learned some stuff in this tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are a stalker because <laughs> you live like, you know, right up the street from me, but whatever. Okay, hope you guys all have a good day. Thank you, thank you.